Well, good afternoon everybody. My name is John Dobson and uh, this is the first of a series of videos that I plan to do on using Lightroom to develop my photos. Um, this first video I'm going to show you how I develop one of my photos from start to end uh, using the, the functions available to me within Lightroom. Um, and in future ones, what I plan to do is to go through each of the panels within the Lightroom Develop module and showing you what each of those do. Um, and then we'll look at some of the other modules as well to see how I use the library module to catalogue my photos and how I use map and print primarily to, um, to also catalogue and, and output them. Uh, and we'll also touch on books, slideshow and web and why I personally don't use those but we'll look at those anyway. So without further ado this is uh, a photo that I took about three years ago um, while we were waiting for the light to clear over Tusselton Scar which is um, an area not far from Ingleton uh, where there's a limestone pavement. For those of you who know of seen or been to Malham Cove it's it's very similar to that but uh, much less visited so we got there this more that morning and we were waiting for the light to clear so we decided to do a little bit of exploring so we drove further down the valley and as we came over a pass we were presented with this vista now as you can see in here um, it's quite hazy but there is some light coming into the valley so what I want to do is I want to show you how I took this photo this is the raw image and how I would uh, process this to get something which I'll be happy to print out or happy to show other people so the first thing I'm going to do on this I'm going to crop the photo so I can get rid of this fence line down here so I click on the, the crop tool and we'll just crop this up a little bring the crop uh, view up a little bit now, one of the things with Lightroom is Lightroom is not a pixel modifying application. It is totally non-destructive. I don't need to create duplicates. I don't need to um, worry about overwriting any of my, my images. And I can always go back into these tools later to, um, to actually adjust them if I want to. So I'm going to click on Done on that. I'm quite happy with that, that crop. So first of all, we start off with the basic panel. The basic panel does um, global modifications. Now looking at the histogram, everything is contained within the histogram, which is good. It means I've got no, nothing clipped. I've got nothing um, uh, burnt out. Uh, but I, what I would like to do is just boost the exposure just a touch to get a little bit more line into this dark area down at the bottom. So if I just push the exposure slider which pushes the histogram off to the left and increases the the light down there it's still quite hazy but we can fix that the next thing I'm going to do is just pull down the highlights just to get a little bit of that glare not too not too much and we'll just boost the shadow area a little bit that has the effect of um, squashing the histogram so what I need to do now is I need to get some contrast back in there now I could always play around with the contrast slider, but before I do that, I want to set the white point and the black point. Now the white point on a photo is the point which is immediately up on the right, very right hand edge of the histogram. Um, if we went any further with that, then that point, if we printed it out, would be paper white. And the way we adjust that white point is by holding down the shift key and double clicking whites. The, uh, the slider there. So immediately we can look at the histogram and see that it's gone right up against the right hand edge. So we've got nothing being blown out. It's still a little bit flat, so there, but if we can cure that by clicking the black point, so double, again hold down the shift key and, and double click blacks, and that pull down, pulls down the black point and immediately we can see we've got a lot more contrast in there. Um, that's not looking too bad. So what I want to do next before I do anything else is I'm going to adjust clarity. Clarity um, has the effect of, well, 
it applies local contrast and has the effect of making it appear a little bit sharper but it also gives a little bit more pop but you don't want to go too far with this um, so I'm going to kind of just boost clarity a little bit and uh, to about where clarity is not something you would want to do if you were doing portraits for example uh, you don't really want to highlight people's um, blemishes on faces for example so on that one you might push clarity the other way but for me and a landscape clarity is is not too bad and next thing i'm going to do is just push vibrance um, just to get a little bit more pop in the colors i'm not going to touch saturation the reason i don't touch saturation is um simply because it's a bit of a blunt instrument it saturates everything even colors which are already saturated and the greens in this photo are already saturated so that's just brought out one or two of the other colors in here so the next thing i really ought to do is to do sharpening but before i do that i want to go down to lens corrections and just make sure i've got no chromatic aberration in the photo uh, which also has the effect of making it appear a little bit sharper so we'll do some sharpening now we'll go to the detail panel which is where we do our sharpening and being a landscape photo this will take actually quite a lot of sharpening uh, probably as much as that maybe yeah it doesn't look too bad if we zoom in on here um we can see we've got some you can see the farm buildings quite nicely now this is a hundred percent image we can see we've got some noise in here uh, so i need to do something about that now i can do Cure noise with the luminance slider um, and as we slide this we can see that some of this noise disappears but if we go too far with it um, we can get quite a, a painted effect to the image but I don't want that however before I do luminance the best thing to do is to actually mask out areas I don't want to sharpen if I would hold down the alt key in windows and the option key on the map on the Mac should say and then click on the masking slider the image goes white anywhere which is white is being sharpened if I move a slider up to the right we see areas of black come into here the black areas are not being sharpened so obviously what I want to do is I want to sharpen edges so if we do that we've now got edges which are being sharpened some of the trees are being sharpened but we've lost a lot of that noise in the, the fields I'm still going to do luminance but I don't need to go anywhere near as far as as I did before so to about there so that's got my um, my sharpening done globe that's my global sharpening and sharpened everything but I'd like to get a little bit more sharpening up into this region up on the hillside so if we use the radial filter for this is this control here and then I stretch out a circle so at the moment what we've got being sharpened oh sorry where we've got the effect being applied is outside of the radial filter uh, we can see in here I've got the exposure set to go to um, to plus one stop and so everything outside this is, is quite bright I want to have that effect to apply inside the, the filter so I click on inverse mask and that inverts the mask and now the effect is being applied inside here next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this um, this filter out go quite wide with this let's just bring this swing this up and we'll just tilt the, uh, the filter just a little bit something like that now I want to sharpen in here well clearly I don't want to do the exposure so let's double click on the effect that will zero everything inside the filter and now we can bump sharpness up let's push a sharpness up to something like there now if we just click this on and off you may not be able to see it on the video but I can see there is some areas being made sharper I also would like to do a little bit of a contrast that gets a little bit more of a haze 
and maybe we'll just bring the exposure down just a touch. Now this is only affecting this the area inside the filter. I want to duplicate this because I want to apply some more sharpening to this. So let's duplicate that. But I don't want to do the exposure and I don't want to do the contrast, but I'd like to do some more sharpening. So that's got some more sharpening applied to the to the far side there. Um, and now the next step I want to do is I want to get a little bit more detail in the sky. So to do that I'm going to use a graduated filter. Now a graduated filter in Lightroom is very similar to using a graduated filter on your camera, except we can do more than just affect exposure. Now obviously at the minute I've got the exposure set to plus one, so it's making the sky quite light, that's not what I want. So we can just bring this down. I don't want to go too far with this. I just want to get a little bit more detail in the sky there. Something like that. Um, that would do me. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is go back to the lens corrections and just enable profile correction, which should just get rid of a little bit of uh, vignetting that I might, might have applied due to the lens. And, uh, and well, well, that's it really. Um, that's the photo. I'd be quite happy with this. I'm happy with the detail we can see in the foreground. It is clear. We've got rid of a lot of the haze. Uh, you can see detail on the, the far slope. Uh, there is haze there. I don't want to get rid of all of it because it gives the, the feeling of depth. So what to summarise, what we've done is we've come from this, which is the original image, to this um, in five minutes. Um, you could spend more time on it, perhaps you might want to spend some more time on here. I might do that to get some more detail out of the far slope, but I'm actually quite happy with that. It's a photo I'm, I'm quite pleased with. So there you are. Um, that's the first, first one done, one of my photos start to end. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back soon and I'll um, plan to go through each of these different panels in turn and just describe what they do and show you how you use them and how you choose which values you want to go with. Anyway, thanks for listening and um, I'll see you soon.